Hi, I'm Joanne Vicknair, Meemaw, with It's Storytime, Meemaw, an answered prayer for stories that point children to God on the Truth Network for Kids. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it. Share it. But most of all, thank you for listening to the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. This is the closest I've ever been to the KGB. (laughs) And I am with a former KGB agent, and he has got quite a story. His name is Sasha. And there's a lot in the news. There has been swirling about Russia and that part of the world. And today we're going to share with you what God is doing there through this man of God. Sasha, thank you for being brave enough to come on the show. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. I got this email from my buddy, Mike, and I was like, does this guy really exist? But you have quite a story. And, you know, we see you now with this amazing Christian seminary in Moscow, equipping men of God to preach the word, to plant churches, to share the gospel. And God's using in a mighty way. But the Sasha from before, from decades ago, was a different person. In fact, I heard someone say that they even called you the Tin Man. That's right. They called me the Tin Man, this character from the Wizard of Oz story, because I had no heart. Mm. I was heartless, so that was my nickname. You grew up in the Russia area. Yes, I was born in Moscow, Russia, and lived my whole life in Moscow. Live there now. I'm a Moscovite by birth. Okay. And so early on, did you know you would be in the military or that you'd be working in the KGB? No, I did not. Uh, My mom raised me in a very classical way. I read all the classics, and I mean the works. uh, Tolstoy, 26 volumes, uh, Dostoevsky, Pushkin, Chekhov. uh, I read uh, William Faulkner, six volumes by him at the age of 12. And I play violin 10 years professionally. But then I guess I got so fed up with this classical training um, that I decided I would swap my violin in for a gun. Mm. And I placed a call to the KGB's headquarters at the age of 15 and asked if they could make an agent out of me. And they said, but sure, just give us your social security number. We get you a pass into the KGB uh, headquarters and we talk. Now, back in Russia, you get your social security with your passport, which you get at the age of 16. So I didn't yet have one, and I told them so. And they laughed so hard, it actually hurt my feelings, rather. But they said, you kiddo, you grow up, you get some education, you call us back. And that's exactly what I did. Only by that time, I was married to Natasha, my wife, And her father just happened to be a KGB colonel. So he pulled some strings. I got on. Active duty, an agent undercover, and rather enjoyed it. Now, it was the KGB which executed 200,000 ministers and demolished 40,000 churches in Russia. But why would I care? I mean, I was heartless. Besides, they paid me some five times better than uh, national average. So for that much money, I'd do anything. So your father-in-law, you had these connections, you're in the KGB, and I guess growing up here, I guess the KGB is kind of like the FBI of Russia, sort of. How would you explain to an American what the KGB is to Russia? As we used to say back in the KGB, the lesser you know, the better you sleep. Okay. <laughs> wow, that's, that's probably where we got this. I, you know, I could tell you, I'd have to kill you. And this is the real deal here, guys. This guy loves Jesus now, but... You were heartless and you were, you know, 200,000 ministers executed for the crime of what? For just being a Christian minister. Mm. And they would aim at ministers. And I mean, they would move into a town and hang every minister they would find on the city gate. Just to make a point, there is no God. And you were a part of that execution process or you you were a part of the organization that was doing that. Well, the lesser you know, That's the right. better you yeah, sleep. I got you, I got you. Now, if you want me to teach you an object on torturing somebody, I need a volunteer for that. Would uh-huh. you volunteer? Well, let's see. Torture volunteers. <laughs> you know what? We'll have to. We're, we're not live on the air right now. We're recording this. 
Too bad we didn't have a phone caller to call in. But we are in uh, a restaurant called Dario. We just had Wednesday in the Word. It's good to, is it good to be among believers here in America? Yes, it is very good to be here in the States. Only I'd much rather be in Russia yeah. because that's where I live. That's yeah. where uh, the Lord called yeah. me to minister, wow. to replenish yeah. the lost, which is 200,000 ministers to be trained and 40,000 churches to be planted. So you were part of an organization that killed ruthlessly 200,000 plus ministers. Now you want to equip 200,000 ministers to share the gospel. That's why there's the noise, by the way. These, all these men of God tickled to death to meet you. We got a picture with you. We'll post that here in a little bit, you know, on our social channels. But so what, how do you go from the KGB to carrying the KJV Bible? How do you go from being a murderer to a missionary? What happened in your life? Tell us a little bit about that. You're in this organization that's again, quite subversive and doing all these, you know, things. And then, you know, now you're loving Jesus. What happened? I was a happy camper because they paid me. And if I had some moral uh, remorses about what I did for the KGB, I could always come up with a good excuse for doing the wrongs. My best excuse, of course, being I have to provide for my family. Mm. And it was my family which uh, set me up one day. My daughter. She was nine years of age. Uh, She came back home from school and she said that she had made a new friend at school. And uh, my daughter claimed that the father of the new friend was a Christian missionary from the United States of America. And I was just dumbfounded right there because I liked none of the three statements she made. Uh, she said that the father of her new friend was a uh, Christian, and I was, of course, a member of the Communist Party. So I was an atheist. Therefore, I claimed there was no God. She said that uh, he was a Christian missionary, and I was, of course, a member of the commun- uh, of, of the KGB, a KGB agent. So. In my view, all these missionaries were spies, and I had to take care of those by profession. And uh, she said that he was a Christian missionary from the United States of America. Mm. And that, of course, made it even worse because I was such a proud product of the Soviet Union. So I thought we needed no help from the United States of America. Thank you very much. So I got so disappointed with my own daughter that I didn't believe her. Instead, I went to her school and I talked with her teacher. Only the teacher confirmed that um, there was, in fact, a couple from the United States of America. And uh, the teacher also said that the couple was looking for a Russian tutor, which almost uh, devastated me rather because, Mm. as we say back uh, back in Russia, up in heavens, Everybody is going to speak the Russian language because it takes eternity to learn it. (laughs) Well, we laugh at it now, but believe me, I was not at the moment because um, that very moment I realized they were not tourists as I had hoped they were, but came to stay. And that, of course, made me even more concerned. Now, I was a KGB agent, so I felt myself obligated to investigate the case to then report it to my authorities. And I did. I came up with a plan to spy them out. I recalled the fact that Natasha, my wife, just happened to be a professional Russian as a second language instructor. Mm. She taught at a military academia in Moscow where officers from third world countries like Guatemala, Cuba, Mm -hmm. Venezuela were coming in big big numbers to get trained in military operations in Russia. Only to do so, they would have to go through a very rigorous course on the Russian language by immersion, a year-long course too, so that then they could take classes at the military academia in Russian. So my wife did that for a living, And I, of course, utilized that to my advantage. I made my wife teach the missionaries, and that gave me a chance to spy over the family. Now, I was an agent undercover, so nobody knew, and I made it look completely innocent. I would just go to their place, and I would just sit there, pretending I was there to wait until my wife would get through with her lesson, to walk her back home, that is, 
whereas of course I was there to listen mm. to what they were talking about and frankly all they talked about was God mm. they played it smart <laughs> they wanted my wife to use the Bible as their textbook and all they wanted to learn was how to say the Lord in Russian and how to say here comes Jesus Christ the Lamb of God wow. who takes away the sin of the world mm. in Russian mm. And how to say, and whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting <clears throat> life in Russian. <laughs> well, so in about a half a year of just yeah. listening to that stuff, I got converted. Oh, my. Okay, now uh, hold that thought. I want to hear the rest of the story. We've got to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more to Sasha. Here he is spying on these Americans who his wife is tutoring to teach Russian, which takes an eternity to learn. That's so cool. And next thing you know, something happens to him that changed his life and his soul and his destiny forever. And now there's a seminary. We're going to hear about that and how you people listening can get involved. So don't touch that dial. More truth talk right after this. The noise you hear from people still clamoring around here. We had Wednesday in the Word and a bunch of great time in the Word with a bunch of guys, a bunch of messed up guys like me going through the Bible and our special guest. The first time we've ever had a former KGB agent pop in with us to visit and it was a blessing. More with Sasha after this quick break. And be sure you download and share the podcast of this interview with everyone you can. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. The conversation continues with a man of God who grew up in Moscow, a member of the KGB, doing all kinds of things that we don't want him to tell us about because we will sleep better per his own <laughs> words. Yet now he loves Jesus. And when we left our hero there, you were suspicious of your wife and your daughter, this couple that they had in. They were teaching them English. And you probably became more suspicious as you started hearing about God and Jesus as you shared. And so you're spying because you're a member of the KGB and you've got to watch this stuff. And who knows, they could end up bad for them, but you had to watch it there in the Soviet Union. Sasha, you're, what, take us back to that. So you're listening to the Bible being interpreted. They're teaching the Bible. You're hearing things you had never heard before. I had never had the Bible in my hands, ever, and so I only heard the gospel. Uh, all these phrases like, uh, here comes Jesus Christ, the love of God, who takes away the sin of the world, or mm. whosoever believes in him will not perish, but uh, have everlasting life and it just worked on me i mean the word of god just penetrated mm. well at least in my head i gave god a chance to even exist which from me a kgb agent was a huge step away from my atheistic yeah. realm that was my conversion by head mm. now then the missionaries they were not just talkative about god but also very pushy about god so some half a year down the road, they pushed me into that praying business and reading the Bible business. Now, they gave me a copy of the New Testament in the Russian language, and uh, they made me read the Bible. Well, I didn't want to blow my cover, so I yielded. And of course, since I had but the New Testament, I started with the Gospel of Matthew from scratch. So I read the Gospel of Matthew through, and then the Gospel of Mark. And then I progressed to the Gospel of Luke. Mm. Only there I stopped because I ran into a portion of the Gospel of Luke, the portion depicting Jesus talking with his disciples. Yeah. And among other things, yeah. Jesus tells them this. He says, If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, then how much more so will the Holy Father mm. give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? And I was just dumbfounded right there because that very moment I realized that Jesus knew me better than I thought he did. Because the first part of what Jesus was saying applied to me perfectly well. Mm. I mean, I knew I was an evil man. I was a KGB agent. But I also knew how to give good gifts to my child. And that made me think. I was thinking, right. If the first part of what Jesus is saying applies to me this well, then what if the rest of what Jesus is saying applies to me as well? And I put God to a test. 
I followed the guidelines of the scripture I just read, and I simply asked the Father of the Spirit. And the bang, I looked up and I saw the Lord. And I mean, I saw the Lord just as clearly as I'm seeing you now. Mm. Now, mind you, I was not a psycho. I was a KGB agent, tough as a nail, hard-headed, stiff-necked. So this was not a mental image. This was the Lord. So the Lord was standing and the Lord was putting down the Holy Spirit right inside of me. The Spirit felt like pure gold, only liquid. And I was filled up with the Holy Spirit of God all the way to the brim. Now that was my conversion by heart, because in my heart I knew Jesus was God. I saw him. Isn't that something? That's something. And of course, that conversion experience, Sasha, a remarkable testimony of the Holy Spirit working in just the power of God, the you know, saving a soul, you know, being new in Christ. But that brought you to an interesting impasse with now you have your job and your faith and you, you there a little bit of conflict there how did you what happened next there and in you know and now there's an amazing seminary now i don't want to go too fast but give us the quick you know what what the lord do after that well then i go back home my wife meets me in the door and she says what's wrong with you i said what's wrong with me honey she said you're smiling <laughs> <laughs> Well, you see, I had never smiled before. She married me because her father, a KGB colonel himself, never smiled either. So my wife honestly thought it was not uh, even proper for a man to ever smile. Now, apparently, Jesus made me smile that day without me realizing that. And, of course, my smile gave me away. And so since I was a baby in Christ, I didn't find anything more suitable than to tell my wife like, that I became a Christian now. Now, she, in turn, confessed to me that she had become a Christian even earlier than I did, only she was scared to death to talk about it with her husband, a KGB agent. And so there we were, two complete babies in Christ. Frankly, we had no idea what to do with it, none whatsoever. So we decided we would uh, read a little bit more of the Bible, because after all, we thought it was the Bible which got us all started on that track, which we did only to find out that those who accepted Jesus Christ in the Bible would then plant a church. Well, so be it, was said, and we planted a church in Moscow, Russia, in 1991, and I was still a KGB agent undercover. Wow. Pastor, KGB agent, and I love this, the, the title of your testimony here, which I, you, you were gracious enough to hand out to our, our, all of our Bible study guys, from a KGB agent to the Lord's ambassador. So you started that church. Now, out of that work came the seminary and, I mean, all kinds of stuff. But at some point, you had to turn in your notice or were you fired. Now, I know they didn't kill you because you're, like, here right now. <laughs> oh, unless I – so we don't know here, brother. <laughs> well, you see, I, then I had my third conversion. I had three, one by head, one by heart, and one by guts. Oh, wow. Because one day I learned by my guts what the call of the Lord on my life was. Yeah. And the call was to replenish the lost – to replenish the lost, which to me, a KGB agent, translated into the need to replenish 200,000 ministers that the yeah. KGB executed mm. and to plant 40,000 churches that the KGB uh, bulldozered. And of course, I had no idea how to pursue the call. All I knew, though, with my third conversion was that there was no way I could keep both my job and my faith because they were not such a sheer contradiction with each other. Now, I decided I would quit one or the other. Uh, well, I could not quit my faith because I saw Jesus Christ with my own eyes. And I could not quit the KGB either because you don't quit the KGB just like that. In fact, in my days, there were two and two only reasons on the basis of which you could quit the KGB. You could either go cuckoo or drop dead. And frankly, none of the options I quite liked. <laughs> so I decided I'd wait, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited until an opportunity represented itself. You might remember those days, you know, Reagan talking to Gorbachev, tear down this wall, glasses, oh, yeah. perestroika. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In those days, Russia opened up for businesses. Wow. And a lot of Americans rushed right in with this idea <laughs> of doing free enterprise. And Russians just loved it because it felt so uh, fresh, so new. 
that everybody in Russia decided he or she would do free enterprise. So the push from within the Russian society was so huge that even the KGB had to respond to it. Mm. And they did by introducing yet the third reason allowing KGB agents to swap their jobs. The reason being doing free enterprise. Um, only if you opted for that reason, you had to prove that the free enterprise that you claimed you'd be doing would pay you better than the KGB, which of course was a joke. I mean, that was rather a trick designed uh, to prevent KGB agents from sure. playing. Sure. But the Lord worked it out. There was a man who accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior at the very church that we planted. And he just happened to be the president of a company. So I shared my concern with him he, in return, uh, wrote me a, a nice little letter on the letterhead of his company and everything. I mean, he signed it. It looked official. Uh, basically, the letter was saying that the company was offering me a job much better paid than uh, the Amen. KGB. And, of course, I knew just the number to quote. So with that letter, I went to the KGB, showed them the letter, and asked if they could beat the deal. Well, they could. And they let me go. And I never told them what I was doing. And I never worked for that company either. But for some quite a while, they were covering me with that letter. I guess I went undercover once again mm -hmm. uh, until it became more or less safe. And then they rather ruthlessly fired me and the church hired me on the spot. Mm -hmm. But uh, the call of the Lord remained the same. And so I planted the Moscow uh, Seminary uh, with a view to multiply the effort because I could have probably planted uh, another church and maybe yet another church in my lifespan, but through a seminary, I could uh, train 30, 60, uh, 100 uh, church planters to send them forth uh, throughout the uh, Soviet Union. And so in 1983, the Moscow Seminary was planted uh, with about 17 uh, student ministers to it, of which I was one of, and now it's grown to over 500 uh, full-time and 600 part-time uh, church ministers. Uh, so I do have a very good chance of fulfilling the call of the Lord on my life within my lifespan. Wow, and redeeming with by, by equipping 200,000 pastors uh, with life, in a sense, redeeming what the locust ate, like Hosea, the prophet Hosea talks about, with the 200,000 that you, you know, the, the KGB was part of killing in your time there. What a blessing, what a powerful story. Now, what God's doing right now in Russia the, what the Holy Spirit's doing, what the Lord's doing through the seminary. We have a couple more quick questions for you when we come back. Our Truth Warrior intern, Colby, and John Priest, one of our awesome Wednesday in the Word guys, has a quick question for you as well. When we come back with Sasha, continuing this conversation from a KGB agent to the Lord's ambassador. Hang on. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. From a KGB agent to the Lord's ambassador, last segment here with Sasha who is a man of God, and he gave, he's listened to the last couple segments where we, we make this a podcast for everyone to hear the whole thing. Please share it with everyone. God saved the Apostle Paul, a murderer of Christians. Amazing. Acts chapter 9. Yeah, more of the Apostle Paul's testimony, by the way, in the New Testament than any other content or narrative in the New Testament except for the Passion of the Christ. So it's, it's everywhere. You have it in Galatians. You have it in Acts. You have it in Corinthians. You have it all over the place, his testimony. So... Your testimony, very similar. Interesting how God has saved you from the KGB now to preaching the KJV, the Word of God. <laughs> I love that little play on words. First of all, we want to know what God's doing in Russia today. Give us an overview of what's happening there. I mean, the predominant religion, or really it is kind of religion, communism, I guess, but give us a, a, a landscape. It's one of the largest landmass countries in the whole world, Russia is. Yes, Russia is 11 time zones. It is the largest country on the planet, uh, 6,000 miles by 3,000 miles. And of course, the Moscow Seminary serves the former Soviet Union, which is Ukraine, Belarus, Moldavia, Armenia, Estonia, all of these countries, because everybody there speaks the Russian language. That's the common language, uh, and that's the language used at the seminary for teaching, preaching, discipling. Now we train ministers, we send them forth to saturate the land of the uh, former Soviet Union with the knowledge, the word, and the presence of God in our attempt to replenish the lost, yeah. lost under the communists. And we do it full time. We uh, are up and standing. Christians are rather welcome these days in Russia because they preach the peace of Christ, and that's good for the country. 
hopefully I can fulfill the call of the Lord within my lifespan yeah. Um, yeah. if I just continue on. So God's calls you to plant the church in Moscow. Now you're planting other churches, but to equip servants of God, pastors, to go and plant more churches all over. And so really ascending ministry, and that's how this Moscow Seminary, and I guess, is there a website for the Moscow Seminary? Okay, there it is right there, moscowseminary.ru. People learn more. They can, people can meet you there. They can learn more about the seminary. Let's go to our Truth War intern, Colby. What kind of question do you have, real quick, young man, for this uh, Russian man of God? Yeah, what an incredible story. I've been very blessed to be able to hear it. One of the uh, most important and awesome parts that I heard was when basically your transformation when you saw Jesus. So describe to us kind of what that moment was like and what he looked like to the best of your knowledge. Well, certain parts of my testimony I keep exclusively for myself because if you uh, say it's uh, too often, it becomes uh, public knowledge and I don't really want that to happen. Amen. Very good. But the, but the fact is, you had an encounter with the Lord. He, cha- he saved your life. He saved your soul. You know, you didn't draw a sketch and print you know, a million copies and then sell them like, you know, the indulgences and all that other, other denominate, you know, do, other people do. You, you encountered in, in the Word of God, God inside of you. And what a great question. What a powerful testimony. John Priest, your thoughts or your questions real quick for this man of God. So, Sasha, we just heard in Wednesday in the Word this morning from Paul's testimony of 1 Corinthians 16, 1 through 12. And he challenges us not only to tithe, but also to give. So very practically speaking, how are you eating? How are you putting gas in your car? How are you paying for clothing? How are you able to come to breakfast this morning? How are you supported while we're here? Well, the Lord supplies. I mean, think of it. I came here for this Bible study, and it's free breakfast, which is Lord's provision. Yeah. Uh, somebody would gas up my car, which is not mine either. If somebody gave me a car on loan to drive. Now that's oh, free of charge. Yeah. Somebody would put me to a house, which is like empty. Uh, yeah. The family has two houses. Uh, they can't be at both simultaneously. Right. And so, you know, they move to one, and they let me stay in the other. But uh, if uh, you want to talk about um, the Lord's provision, I want to talk about the Moscow Seminary again. It costs me $1,200 a year to train a minister in Russia. And I mean, full right. Full right. So that's where you're training him in systematic theology. You're training him in interpreting the Bible. You're training him in the languages of the Bible, the Greek, the Hebrew. You're training him to preach the word, to be a pastor, that sort of thing, to be a shepherd of a flock, to plant a church. Right, exactly. And so think of it. I mean, how much would it cost me if I decided to send my Christian leaders to the States to a seminary to study? You, you'd probably be looking at some $60,000 a year. So compared to that 1200 that I need in Russia to train a minister, it would be 50 times a better deal. But the problem that I have with the idea of sending somebody to the States to a Bible college to study is, guess what? They don't come back to Russia. Right, um, right. Right. In fact, uh, out of 10 cents to the U.S., only one comes back. So the investment gets lost. So I invite you to support the Moscow Seminary monetarily. You cannot go there yourself because uh, Russia has completely closed its borders uh, to any kind of mission work. You can't even get a tourist visa to Russia. But I cannot do without you. So we work through one mission society, which is a 501c3 in the states you just go to one mission society in one word dot org one mission society dot org you type moscow seminary in the search line and, and, and you said moscow seminary moscow seminary, seminary. Yeah. thank you um, and the website's moscow seminary dot ru for your ministry but this one mission society dot org has a way to give directly from america and by the way we should be thankful grateful abundantly blessed to have you here because really the West has sent more missionaries than any in history than any other, you know, even hailing back to Jerusalem and Acts, you know, the upper room where it sent out missionaries. We're here today because they obeyed the call of the master and they went. Jesus said, go. And they said, yes. So America, we've been blessed financially, spiritually with re- abundant resources. So now how do we use that blessing? We need to be generous giving, right, priest? Amen. Well, and also with what you're saying so you just mentioned a figure, 1200 That is the price for one man for a year, correct? Right. Okay. So that being the case, 
how are you able to come freely come here to the United States? How did you actually get here, and what is your plan? I have a business visa to the States. Uh, it's a three-year multiple entries visa. Now, I only come to the States twice a year for about two weeks okay. at a time yeah. to raise scholarships for the needy students at the yeah. Moscow Seminary. And we send uh, all the donations through One Mission Society, onemissionsociety.org. Just type Moscow Seminary in the search line. And then One Mission Society sends donations to us in a bulk. Yeah. So the name of the actual donor never surfaces, yeah. and that keeps everybody oh. safe. Amen. Yeah, we're glad you came. We're glad to interview you on Truth Talk. What a blessing. Of course, my dad, Big Stu, you know, he always asked the question, what about the threat of liberal seminaries? in Moscow. And he loved your answer. He said, you said something to the effect of, they really don't do well because it's the real deal over there. Yes, we don't have a single liberal thought on campus at the Moscow Seminary. It's all evangelical conservatives. You're, you're in it and it's, you know, you, they don't have time to pick apart, you know, is the Bible fake? You know, all this nonsense, this racism, evil stuff that's crept in and corrupted a lot of seminaries in America. It's about the Bible. It's about preaching the Word of God, studying the Word of God, sharing the Word of God, being a godly man in the home, of course, and then, of course, being a pastor. The Moscow Seminary, moscowseminary.ru. Now, Pastor, how can we pray for you? All of our listeners listening have heard your story, remarkable story from KGB agent to the Lord's ambassador. How can we pray for you? Well, please pray for the Lord to allow me to fulfill the call of the Lord on my life within my lifespan. Mm. And, of course, uh, the media, the better. The more uh, ministers we train in Russia, Ukraine, Moldavia, Belarus, the better. And so that's yeah. my request for okay. prayer. And even with this war going on, pray for that, right? Pray that God would open doors to the gospel there and for, for God to bring peace. It's the gospel Amen. because the gospel produces changes in the heart. Amen. And uh, those uh, with the heart changed yeah. will not yeah. go for a uh, war with anybody. How can we pray for your family? My family, I have a wife and we've been married for 40 years and eight daughters, a biological child and seven engrafted daughters. So yes, I have an extended family, brother. Amen. Please yeah. pray for them too. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. Hey, we, yeah. we would love to hear that one of the verses that really captured your heart and brought you to Christ after being in the KGB and all that. We'd love to hear it in Russian. Will you quote John 3.16 for us in Russian as we wrap up? Thank you so much. Wow. Pray for this man. Pray for Russia. Pray about how God would use you to reach these folks to come alongside this man of God. And thank you so much for being on. God bless you. Thank you. One thing I do want to mention, it took a missionary for me to get going, and it took one mission society for the Moscow Seminary to get going. But trust me, locals will reach out to their own yeah. in a by far more effective way yeah. than any missionary right. will, because they don't need the passport, they don't need visa, they speak the most uh, difficult language on the planet, and yeah. they know the local culture. Yeah. So please do invest in training yeah, local good. ministers yeah. in Russia, in Russian, and for Russia. This is the Truth Network.